Welcome. Let's dive a bit deeper into Rust error handling. And a programming language solution to error handling significantly influences the robustness, brevity, readability, and to an extent, the runtime performance of your code. So, consequently, the error handling story is an important part of programming language design. So let's look at how Rust implemented this. So what is the state of error handling in Rust at the moment? We can say we have three tools to handle errors. First is the result type, which is um, something we can use to either res return an a okay result or an error result. Then we have the error trait from the standard library, which abstracts over error types. And then we have the question mark operator, which can be used like as a short syntax to delegate errors to the calling function and potentially convert between different error types. So when we have all these tools, why the need to create all these different kinds of crates of error handling? Let's figure this out. Let's create two different error structs, A and B, and the main function. Now let's create two different kinds of functions that returns an error A and an error B. So if we compile this function, we see it works as expected. The error A is being returned. But then if we activate the other function and now compile, we see an error. And this error message gives us a hint. It says, it missed the implementation for the from trait on A because the function returns essentially an error A, but we are returning in the scope from the function returning from error B an error B. So here the first boilerplate starts to occur. So let's write this from trait implementation for error A. This is how a from implementation looks like. So we give the error B type in the generic and we specify a function that takes an error B and returns an error A essentially. Now when we compile, we see the question mark operator neatly converted to error B to an error A. Using the from traits is one solution to this problem. Another solution would be to return dynamic errors. And the way we do this is to return a box which contains a trade object that has to implement the standard error trait. So when we start compiling this, we see the following. It says now the trade standard error is not implemented for error A. So here we have another piece of boilerplate we have to create. So let's implement the error trait for error A and error B. The error trait needs as a minimum the display and debug traits defined. As such, we have to implement them. When we compile, we see that all we also need to implement this for the error B, of course. So let's implement that as well and compile. And what we see now is that everything works and error A has been produced. This short exercise already shows that it's a pretty tedious job to do over and over again. And this is why the community has developed, using the power of macros, a lot of libraries to help essentially in this tedious boilerplate process. Because why waste time if we can just declare what we need? So let's go over all the options. What we can see is that in 2015, the quick error library arose and then essentially a whole bunch of other errors libraries were created, essentially doing the same. So either they work on the dynamic errors, which we showed before, or essentially it has an opinionated structured way of doing these errors. Well, I, Advice which is to look all at all of them, but also write your own error traits because it learns exactly what is happening essentially below the boilerplate. Essentially, what I want to focus on this, what I want to focus on this episode, is on the anyhow and this error library because this covers both cases needed. One, the this error library from the same author, by the way, 
um, deals with the structured approach uh, towards error creation. That means like enums or structs or anything like this. And on the other side, we have the anyhow, which helps with the dynamic part, which means um, what, what we showed before here in um, the box, so the, the return of the dynamic errors. So let's make our boilerplate disappear and use the this error library to implement what we implemented by hand right now. So we include the this error, error library and the, we include the derived trait, we specify it on our objects and we place an error attribute to specify what our display, generated display method has to present. And what we already notice is that this code looks much more cleaner, much more concise and much more declarative. Um, as such, projects real value. The nice thing about this error is that it's completely compatible with the standard error implementation of the standard library, which is a unique selling point for this library and why I'm going to use it in my future projects. So let's implement the from trait on error A, just like we did before, but then using the this error library. So we're adapting the code here to make everything work. And as we compile and execute, we see that error A has been returned. So let's, let's replace this dynamic error by error A again and see if it works. And yes, we see that it returns error A just as expected and converted from B to A. Perfect. So let's recap. We see here a very nice declaration of an error which implements all the traits we need for both errors. So now let's take a look at anyhow. What does this do? This helps with dynamic errors. So let's adapt our code to use this result from anyhow. That's easy. Just replace the result as it was and you don't even have to specify an error type anymore because this is now generic. These two functions return two different kinds of errors, but now it's handled by anyhow result. So let's execute. See now it returns again the nice error A, but now a very nice detailed stack trace. It shows the display plus the calls by, and this is a real nice addition. To summarize my choice, I'm going to use these libraries for my error handling in my project in the future because they're the most modern, they're backward compatible, and they're really easy and structured to use. Also created by the author of Surda, so we can trust that the implementation of the macros is probably very well done. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again.